Hi, this is Dr. Don. I want to take a little bit of time here and do a walkthrough of getting set up in the Laboratory 2 and show you some things that may help you uh, get moving. First of all, I like to set up my uh, browser and close everything except the material I'll be working with. Uh, this allows you to do everything in one screen if you've got it. And you can see here I've got the Lab 2 Rehearse 1 tab open, the Lab 2 Rehearse 2, although I'm just going to show you Rehearse 1 here, and then the Lab 2 Remix tab, and then I've got my Posit Cloud open, okay? And this is the way I like to work. I can go back and forth, just to make it easier since I'm working with the Lab one, I'm going to move my Posit Cloud just next to it. So here we are in your Lab 2 Rehearse. You should, of course, read down through this material. I would visit some of these references and things that we suggest to you. For example, this Grammar Graphics, which is a good six-minute video that gives you an overview of the ggplot package that we're going to use throughout the course to help us make our graphics. And then as you go down, the first thing here is to set up the lab. And we've got this first link. It says link to set up lab two. And all you need to do there is click on that and it will take you to your Posit Cloud login page. And once you log in, it will set up lab two in your Posit Cloud. Of course, remember, you've got to immediately save that temporary copy up there at the top where it says temporary and then save permanent. Click on save permanent right then to make sure you've got that copy. Okay. As you read on down here, you'll see there's a second link to Posit Cloud and it says use this link to continue work on lab two. What this is for, if you take a break, lunch break, dinner break, coffee break, go for a run and you shut down and then you come back, shut down your Posit Cloud and you come back, you can click on this link and it just takes you to the login page, okay? It doesn't create another copy because you don't need that. And as you scroll on down here, which is read everything, understand it. And then when you get to the first code chunk here, and you can see we've got them numbered. CC1 stands for code chunk. And we've got the little green running man icon, which says I need to copy and paste this and then run this code. So what I'm going to do here is click on copy code and it changes and says copied. Now I can go over here to my Posit Cloud and I'm in my, whoops, I don't have Rehearse 1 open yet. That's why it's got the console up top. Let's go over here and I'm going to click on the name Rehearse 1 Worksheet and then it opens up and it opens up in what we call the Source Editor window. And you can see we've got two tabs there. One is called Source and one is called visual. This is a source editor and the visual editor. And I'll show you what I mean here. This is the source editor. It looks just like the raw text code. And that, for some people, is the safest way to go to, um, uh, when you're learning how to do this, use the source editor view. But you can, I'm going to click on the visual tab, and what this does, it makes the page look more like what it's going to look like when you save it to uh, a PDF or a Word. and also looks more like the actual web page. And if you scroll down here, you can see the same information is there, but it looks, and you can see the code chunks are still there. You can see the boundaries, but you can't see those leading and ending back quotes. And that's where some folks get into trouble. Let me go back to the source view and you can click these back and forth. Here's this code two. And again, see these three little dashes there. If you look real close, they're actually back quotes. And that's a key on the left-hand side of your keyboard up near the top left-hand corner. Mine has got the Spanish tilde sign as the uppercase and the lowercase is this back quote. If you accidentally delete one of those, which is easier to do when you're in the visual mode. See what happens? The gray expands and expands and expands, and it messes up uh, the ability for you to 
uh, use the code. So be careful of that. I'm going to go back up here, find my place. You can see there should be three. I've only got two. I'm going to go back, whoops, and put that missing back quote back in there. Now I'm going to save that. And by the way, whenever you make a change, see how the name turns red and the asterisk? Click on the save to save that change. It goes back to black. So there is my code chunk two. I want to go up here to code chunk one. It's already got a bunch of material in there, and I've all forgotten my place. I'm going to highlight that, control Victor, paste over it. Now you can see I've got all these packages that we want to load into the session library. So I'm going to run the code over here in the Run Code button. And it may take a little bit to load those. And you can see down here in the console window, this is where the code actually runs. We can see each of those um, packages has run. And we're back. We've got a uh, ready prop. We've got that uh, greater than symbol and then a little insertion blinking there. That tells me we're ready to run again. We go on down. Here's code chunk two. I'm just going to put my cursor in there and then go back here to research excuse me to rehearse one on the web page scroll down there is code chunk two that I need to copy so again green square copy the code just click on it now it's copied I can go back and deposit cloud inside my code chunk two make sure I'm in the right place put the cursor there control V on the PC and that take case that code in there and I can run that code and you can see this time it's created the graph the histogram that we want and you just continue forward there if we go down here to code chunk three I'm going to go back and if we scroll on down you can just keep reading this and this time we're going to load some data so I'm going to copy that it includes the library reader in case we don't already have it that's okay if we uh, paste it in again go back here paste it into that code chunk 3 again control V now I can run this and you can see it's run and over here I've created a data object the New York City films which is what this said this is read comma separated file and it gives it the path film permits which is in our data folder right there and that's how we get to it and we load that data file and then create this data object one final thing if you click on that name it will open up inside the source editor window and it'll look like an Excel or Google worksheet whoops get it loaded in there and you can see our variables are across the top and then these rows are our observations. And we got a bunch. If you look at that, it says 508, I'm sorry, 50,728 of 14 variables. So there's 50,000 rows and 14 columns. So I hope this helps. Get started and go do it.